there coming from Ralph Peter Sandra. Yeah, and, and all over the place, really. I mean, the left-leaning uh, Israeli newspaper, Haaretz, came out and said, you know, what was he thinking? This is one of the most embarrassing incidents for John Kerry, the Secretary of State, uh, since he took office. Uh, and, you know, this raises serious doubts about the steps that he has taken uh, to make this deal happen. That being said, Colonel Ralph Peters uh, went on to say that it's really necessary when analyzing the reaction and the action of this administration to separate President Obama from Secretary of State John Kerry. And I'd be interested in your take on this, Katie. Um, he was saying that he doesn't believe that John Kerry is trying to sabotage the Israeli-United States relations. He actually thinks for Kerry it's more about Kerry and about personal glory for John Kerry. Mm. What's your take on that? I'm not so sure I agree with that. I think John Kerry is trying to carry out the administration's, quite frankly, what I see as an anti-Israel agenda, and that's John Kerry's position, is to go in there and try to negotiate a ceasefire, which he's been very bad at doing. One thing that I've noticed that's concerning to me is we've heard a whole lot about how Israel needs to do more. We haven't heard a whole lot about condemnation towards Hamas. We haven't heard condemnation of the states uh, like Iran who have been sponsoring Hamas. And we haven't heard a whole lot from the Palestinians who are against Hamas. So Lisa Daftari actually has an amazing piece at the foxnews.com interviewing Palestinians who are appalled at the way that Hamas has been using Palestinians as propaganda, dead Palestinians as propaganda, in order to gain political power. I want to hear more condemnation of the people supporting these terrorists and less condemnation of Israel. I disagree with you about Kerry because I think that Kerry is such a politician. He's not a diplomat. He's not a naturally diplomatic person. And he's someone who's still bitter about losing the presidential race in 2004. And I think for him it's constantly about his own agenda. And I, I don't think that this administration is particularly kind, uh, fair, or balanced when it comes to Israel. And uh, that's their problem is, you know, they, they didn't go through the ceasefire, at least Kerry, through the Palestinian Authority, right. you know, and it, it's, they think that they're giving too many concessions, not only to Hamas, but to Turkey and Qatar as well. I don't think they get it at all. I mean, this is a, a group that is hell-bent on the destruction of Israel. It's in their charter. They've right. never revised it. Uh, this is a scourge. There's a medical model to be pursued here, which is when there's a cancer, uh, it's not time to talk. Mm -hmm. It's time to act. And until there's a sense from this group, which I don't expect to be forthcoming, that they are radically changing the way they see Israel, then there's nothing to talk about. And Netanyahu should make no excuses and should stop at nothing to rid that place of that scorch. Uh, okay, but what, uh, here's, here's my only question about that, is what happens when you rid your, and what does it mean, number one, to rid yourself of that scourge? And you've got people in Palestine... to utterly destroy the group that is hell-bent on destroying okay, you. Okay, and you know, say we, we've done that with the Taliban, we've done that with Al-Qaeda, and the worry is that... No, that we haven't done that with Al-Qaeda, you stupid How bitch, you they're still the there. climate there, so you have people who, you know, are, are broke and disillusioned, and what they are wanting for yeah. is being place with this well this radical... I still think you're laboring with a misconception that talking which is an American notion of diplomacy and coming to an agreement Bill Siegel who's an author and a friend of mine would say that's a delusion they're not interested in your talking they're not they what? can't right. hear you they don't okay, let's, want let's to talk you, you bombed it's them a into fight oblivion. thank you my man damn what, how but do you play in that overall, problem, though, although, although, although John Kerry and the Obama administration has made this very complicated process, acting like it's complicated, yeah. the bottom line here is if Gaza and Hamas weren't firing rockets into Israel, there's no conflict. It's very simple. And so, you know, Hamas has violated the ceasefires that they have put on the table repeatedly. Uh, you know, there, this Even is a, this is a different... The Egyptian brokered ceasefire that lasted right. six hours that Israel agreed to. Right, and, and exactly. Hamas and so the issue here is, I think, look... This is not just about Hamas. This is about radical Islam wanting to destroy the Jewish state of Israel. You had the leaders of Hamas on the national television in the United States saying, we don't recognize Israel as a Jewish state. Right. When you have that mindset, and you've had that mindset for hundreds, mm. thousands of years, um, there's going to be a, a problem there. And he so it's about keeping it at bay and protecting your people as the days go on. Israel, and that's exactly right. what they're I did doing. read the script, but just a couple comments. Um, you know, I think the Netanyahu has a responsibility to act in the best interest of Israel realistically and not in a delusional way because the only thing that if they agree to any kind of ceasefire it's not something they intend on following through on so in order exactly. to get the best outcome and a safe outcome for Israel 
they have every right to defend themselves against a terrorist organization, period. Absolutely. All right, and now to this, the U.S. accusing Russia of violating a landmark nuclear arms treaty, the one that was signed in 1987 by President Ronald Reagan, helping to end the Cold War. So what did the Obama administration do? It sent Russian pr President Vladimir Putin a letter calling this a serious matter. The serious matter involves Moscow allegedly te uh, test firing banned cruise missiles. Senior officials say it's been going on for several years now, dating back to 2008. Here's Governor Mike Huckabee reacting. This is the Vladimir Putin who believes that he is sort of Superman. And he's like that teenage boy sitting up in his room. His mother says, don't make me come up there. But his mother hadn't been there in five years. I don't think that a strongly worded letter from Barack Obama, if he can get it sent off, uh, before his next round of golf is going to matter to Putin. He simply doesn't care. Your take on that, Kimberly? Yeah, I think it's priceless. Go, Governor, right? <laughs> I mean, what is there to say? How could be nailed it? It's really true. I mean, look at this kind of conduct. A strongly worded letter? Really? Let's be realistic here so about what is outcomes. It? So what was the purpose then? Uh, we have to ask ourselves that it was done, you know, and uh, I'll go back to uh, uh, Colonel Ralph Peters last night. He basically said that while in the past the president was actually able to just cover things up and make it look like Russian United States relations were okay, so now we know that they're not, right. and this is a way to look like he's acting, he and his administration are acting aggressively without actually doing anything. Dr. Keith? Well, you know, a letter acting aggressively. I, I think that he's shown his cards. Right. He can't exercise American power because he doesn't feel American. Right? So he, he's hamstrung the president because in you order... Arthur? No, not a, I don't care where he was born, okay. really. But I, I'm absolutely certain that in his heart and soul, he does not, he feels that America has been to the detriment of the world, generally. I think he doesn't and know what to do. America, I, 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 wouldn't even, I wouldn't even give him that much of a complex I think diagnosis. I think the guy has given up. I think you're exactly up, wrong. I, I, think I, he, I don't think he knows what to do. Wrong. I don't think he has a, an ideology that informs Of course he does. Well. And I would he agree, could I would be more successful he, at doing what he wants to do. I would do. agree that he has an ideology that yep. America Power. He came into office with this idea that Americans don't need to the most be the most powerful in the world. We've seen his foreign policy play out that way. On the issue of Vladimir Putin, October 22nd, 2012, Barack Obama in a debate with Mitt Romney said, the 1980s called, they want their foreign policy back, and right. here we are two years later with a very serious foreign policy problem on our hands with the Russians. <coughs> the issue of the letter is one thing. I think the good news is that the Europeans are finally getting on board with more economic sanctions, which I think at this point is the only way we're going to get him to pull back on those Things. There's a lot more we can be doing here in the United States in terms of energy production that could he help likes that. The sanctions, yeah, but I, I don't know if the sanctions do anything with it. it well, it, 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 the, it. the polls and poll numbers in Russia prove your point. I mean, people, he has a 90% approval yeah. rating in Russia. I mean, it, it, when it comes to changing the minds of the Russian people, that's not happening. The, home um, because but the but money's still right. flowing, yeah. Katie, and the purpose of tougher sanctions so would be right. to cut that money line off. Well, and, but the most important thing here is to, to pay attention to what the topic of the segment is, and that is that the Russians are being accused by the United States states of violating a very serious treaty that was put into place by in Ronald Reagan yeah. and that's something that we should take seriously. But Kimberly, we can send all the letters we want but without action, does this really matter? There's no bite to it. Uh, you know, it's like my guard dog that has no teeth. No one's really <laughs> you have a guard afraid. Dog no teeth? Of course not. <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, he's sex, so I just wanted to know if you actually had such a thing. The hypothetical. It yeah. would be a you wonderful cycle. Nobody's medical. worried about getting bitten by a dog that has no teeth. Okay, so no what are the teeth? Yes. So, so see, what you, that's, my, that's my question, because you can't right. exactly militarily engage a nuclear-armed country, or can you? What do you but do? You know what well, the problem is? This has been a treaty. consistent like series of failures on behalf of this administration that is like waffling at best in terms of its foreign policy, yeah. and he really isn't interested in doing this. He's still in a position of being an apologist as an American, I understand what you're saying. It's not like where he was born. It doesn't matter. It's who he is inside, what he feels the role of the United States should be. He believes sure. that we should be right. throttled back, that America is not the watchdog. We are not okay, responsible. Do you know what we're seeing here? Do you know what we're seeing here as far as the timeline? And he can no it? longer blame Bush for his failures, especially right. on foreign policy, because he's tried to do that with the economy, even with the VA. But, you know, now he, he has run out of that narrative. There's no, there's no longer any gas 
in that engine. I don't think he feels a sense of response, personal responsibility no, about it whatsoever. He's worried more about his legacy. He's worried more about the golfing, the fundraising, mm. you know, the Democrats, and his core ideology. That is what he wants to do. He said he was going to come in and fundamentally transform and change things, and I believe that he has done so, especially with respect to how the world views us, because Putin is... Yeah. Uh, unabashed and not afraid. Kimberly and her toothless guard dog have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one chunk of the population you do not want to be a part of. The percentage of Americans dealing with debt collectors and the numbers are mind-blowing.